In June 2025, Spain's state-owned shipbuilder Navantia made a bold move to enter Canada's multi-billion dollar submarine procurement race by presenting its S-80 submarines as a contender during CANSEC, Canada's premier defense exhibition. With Ottawa aiming to replace its aging undersea fleet through the Canadian Patrol Submarine Project, CPSP, Navantia has emerged as a serious player, seeking to not only sell submarines but also anchor a long-term strategic alliance across the Atlantic. The S-80 offering represents more than just a military platform, it is being positioned as the foundation of a broader industrial and geopolitical partnership. Navantia, backed by the Spanish government, is promoting the submarine as a high-end, NATO-compatible solution for Canada's evolving defense needs. The $100 billion Canadian investment opportunity is one of the largest non-nuclear submarine contracts on the table globally, and Spain is leveraging it as a chance to deepen its ties with fellow NATO ally Canada. Engineered in Spain and developed entirely with domestic expertise, the S-80 stands out as one of the most sophisticated diesel-electric submarines in operation within NATO. It features a third-generation air-independent propulsion AIP, system, enabling prolonged submerged endurance without surfacing. Weighing in at over 3,000 tons and built for extensive blue-water deployments, it's tailored for missions in the Arctic and North Atlantic, critical regions for Canadian strategic interests. The S-80 project, initiated in the early 2000s, symbolizes Spain's ambition to build sovereign underwater capabilities without relying on nuclear propulsion. The lead unit, the S-81 Isaac Peral, was launched in 2021 and is now concluding sea trials. Constructed at the Cartagena shipyard with support from national innovation programs, the platform has matured into a modern asset fit for global export. Its modular architecture and interoperability with NATO systems make it especially attractive to nations seeking flexible, coalition-ready systems. Navantia's pitch has emphasized not just platform performance but also robust industrial collaboration. Unlike South Korea's KSS-3 offering, which would likely be produced overseas before any local manufacturing, Navantia's proposal includes full-spectrum technology transfer and active participation by Canadian defense firms. This element could yield substantial local economic gains and enhance Canada's shipbuilding capacity. When compared with other candidates, such as Germany's Type 212 CD and France's Scorpion, the S-80 is portrayed as the most combat-ready and NATO-integrated option available today. Navantia representatives have framed their bid as a gateway to long-term defense collaboration rather than a one-off procurement. Spain's initiative carries broader geopolitical weight as well. In a time of growing instability in the Arctic, Atlantic, and Indo-Pacific theaters, Madrid is presenting itself as a stable and experienced partner. A successful deal would mark the first major defense industrial link between Spain and Canada, two countries that, while historically distant in defense affairs, are increasingly aligned through NATO frameworks and maritime security concerns. Navantia's proven track record includes major programs such as the F-110 frigates, adding to its credibility. The Spanish government's involvement underscores its strategic intent to expand its defense industry's global footprint, especially into North America. For Canada, the acquisition of the S-80 would mark a significant shift from British-sourced legacy submarines toward a modern fleet equipped for 21st century threats. More than just an upgrade, this procurement could reshape Canada's naval doctrine and posture in contested waters for decades to come. In essence, Spain's offer is not just a commercial bid, it's a call to deepen NATO unity, modernize Canada's underwater warfare capabilities, and establish a durable industrial alliance. If Ottawa moves forward with the S-80, the decision would signal a new chapter in transatlantic defense relations and place Canada on the cutting edge of non-nuclear submarine operations.